Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're watching this video from. Today, I'm going to talk about the Terraform Cloud Platform, and in particular, the cost estimation feature. So today we're going to see that in action. We're going to see some of the behaviors I observed and some of my review. So here's the agenda of what we're going to talk about today. We're first going to briefly cover what the cost estimation feature is, what is supported by it, what I tested with it, and some of the behaviors I saw, uh, some good, some bad, some confusing, and also wrap up to share some learning resources for certification in Terraform. So what is Terraform Cloud cost estimation? Well, briefly, this is a paid feature, so it's not available in the free version of Terraform Cloud. You have to pay for it. It's part of the team and governance package specifically because there's different packages available. It provides us with an hourly and monthly cost estimation for the resources that we're planning on deploying, provided we're using the Terraform Cloud uh, platform for that execution. And it gives us the, the cost and some deltas of our estimations. So we see here that it's currently, as of this recording, listed at $70 per user per month to be able to use this specific uh, package within Terraform Cloud, the Terraform Cloud platform. So even though there's other features in here that we're not going to cover today, we're going to focus on that third one in the bottom right, the workspace cost estimation. So what resources are supported with the Terraform Cloud cost estimation? Well, as of this recording, uh, the list is a little bit limited. Right now we have 13 different resources that are supported uh, in AWS, in Azure, and three that are, that are supported in GCP. So things like uh, compute instances, networking uh, elements like load balancers, firewalls, uh, databases, some storage, uh, and that sort of thing. So that's what it currently supports today. Obviously, of course, things are going to iterate in the future, but that's where we are to get started with this feature. So here's what I tested with it. I had a series of Terraform templates as a module compiled together, which created a virtual network in Azure. Within that virtual network, I had three different subnets. I had a single network security group with seven rules within it. There was one association, so associating the uh, NSG to the appropriate subnet. I had Azure Firewall and two VPN gateways, specifically one for site-to-site, -site, one for express route, and then three public IP addresses. Those are for the three last resources, Azure Firewall and the two gateways. So that is the template I tested with uh, within uh, Terraform Cloud for the cost estimation. So let's take a quick look at some of the observed uh, behaviors and my thoughts about this. So here's what I observed when I ran through this process. I have my Terraform template uh, in Terraform Cloud. It does the Terraform plan uh, aspect of what I'm pushing up. And then as part of this paid tier, it does the uh, cost estimation in line with that Terraform plan. Notice what I'm highlighting here on the screen. My Terraform plan showed that I'm creating 18 resources. But the cost estimation only did an estimation for 12 resources. So there's a gap. There's something missing between there, which I'll get to in the next slide in a moment. Notice here, though, for the object that it does produce some information for, the Azure Firewall, it gives us additional data 
like the it's a standard deployment versus say a basic SKU or a premium SKU, SKU whatever might be available for that specific resource and it is showing how much it costs per hour to run that specific resource type as well as the the monthly uh, cost expected for that specifically <clears throat> now here of course we have the resource column on the left that's correspond corresponds to that resource type uh, element in our terraform template and then the name is not the name property of the executed uh, code uh, as far as what is generated for the actual resource being created in the cloud but it's that terraform name reference within our code itself that we're referring to the terraform object so just so that we're clear on that so this is kind of what i observed it was a little uh confusing at first but let's break down out of this output what does the cost estimation show and not show just to clarify so here's the breakdown when i took a look at the output from the terraform plan execution and then the cost estimation um, representation it provided me information about the azure firewall uh, public ip addresses but not any costs associated to those though there is cost then each and in each individual network security group rule so remember i had seven and also an entity for the network security group to subnet association what it did not provide an output for was the resource group the virtual network its underlying subnets and the actual network security groups themselves so i found this a little uh odd a little confusing because the stuff that was not included in the output okay makes sense because there is no cost associated with creating a resource group creating a virtual network by itself creating an nsg there's no cost associated to those objects but from the actual output that was included there's no cost associated with network security group rules anyways there's no cost associated with making that the appropriate association of the nsg to the subnet so why were those included in the output as well i found that a uh, slightly confusing but it is what it is it is uh you know a new feature a new service and that's kind of uh, where we are today with that so let's kind of compare uh what i liked and what i didn't like specifically uh through this testing so first the good right it is absolutely awesome to have a cost estimation before you actually execute your deployment really awesome feature to have for sure i did like how it showed some additional details like the SKU for the Azure Firewall. It said it was a standard uh, tier, right? Instead of maybe if there was a basic option or if there was a premium option for whatever resource we're deploying. So it did provide some details, but not all details, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, what's really awesome about this feature is that it can be coupled with the HashiCorp Sentinel product to provide uh, policy validation and what this means is if someone's going to execute their terraform template and the cost estimation engine says it's going to cost you say two hundred dollars to run all of the resources you're you're building in your template two hundred dollars a month you can have a policy through hashicorp sentinel to validate against that to check against that and say prevent anyone from deploying any resources that cost over a hundred dollars a month so it can uh, be coupled with the policy engine to bring further granularity and protection from a cost governance and cost control so a lot of really great potential for the product and for the feature what i didn't like about it was 
the current limited support for resources. As you recall, there's only 13 resources that are supported for AWS and Azure, and there's three for GCP. So right now it's very limited, right? It doesn't cover the, the large spectrum of resources out there, but that's to be expected. It's, it's a new feature from HashiCorp. So as all things are released from any company ever, things are iterated on, right? Improved, refined, enhanced. So I expect that to happen uh, in the future, of course, for that list to be expanded. But right now it's a little bit limited. What I also didn't like was that how it did not provide some additional information on the deployment region. So it did recognize that, okay, the Azure Firewall that you're deploying is a standard tier, but if you look in the uh, portal itself, it says it's going to the default region. Well, that's not quite accurate because I was targeting a specific Azure region for my deployment. So I would have liked to see that information, that metadata also surfaced through the cost estimation engine because it's available as an output from the Terraform plan itself. So it's, it's, it's able to access and reference that information, but it doesn't. Next is uh, the third point that I didn't like is with the output that we get from the cost estimation. It includes objects and resources that in my personal opinion should not be listed. We don't need to list NSG rules. We don't need to list NSG associations to subnets because those don't cost anything. And it, when you're doing a test, a, a small test or a POC, it's simple and it's easy. But if you're going to use this as an enterprise or at a large scale, you can have hundreds or thousands of resources listed there some of which have zero cost actually associated to them, and it just creates noise. It just creates confusion in the output. So I would much rather see this be enhanced in the future to uh, eliminate showing resources that have zero cost, or maybe truncating that into a separate uh, collapsed section of zero cost resource uh, entities. I understand the logic that's happening because it's basically looking at your Terraform template and making an account for each and every resource that you're declaring in the template. But uh, from a large scale perspective, it's just gonna create confusion for that estimated output. So I'd like to see that kind of uh, collapsed or removed or put some more logic behind there so that we're only surfacing and seeing what is truly going to cost us as part of that evaluation. Finally, it does not include or tell you what currency the estimation is in. Is it based in USD? Uh, because maybe that's uh, where uh, we're located, where we're running it from. Um, does it base it on the region, the public cloud region that you're deploying it to? So I was targeting uh, West US for my deployment, but I'm based in Canada. So how do I know what the currency of that cost estimation is? Just having that would be helpful, whether we're targeting uh, the logic behind the scenes on what uh, region we're deploying the resources to and using that as a reference, because some regions have different costs for the same type of resource. So I'd really like to see that enhanced a little bit more and having some, some more logic around there and then showing that to the end users. Okay, here I just want to wrap things up and provide you with some information about certification. This is a hot topic. Everyone asks about the Terraform Associate Certification from HashiCorp. Uh, myself and uh, fellow MVP Ned Bellevance, we co-authored a cert prep guide specifically based on our real world hands-on experience with Terraform and then making that correlate to the various objectives of the of the exam itself. So we've authored this and prepared this for uh, to share with the, the public, the community. There's been a lot of positive feedback around our publication and helping people uh, along that path that's available on LeanPub. So I'll share the link uh, to that. 
And also, HashiCorp has their own official study guide, uh, exam review, sample questions as well, which also is designed to help you study and prepare and understand uh, Terraform uh, to be able to write and pass that Terraform Associate certification. So definitely take a look at those resources that are available today. And finally, this is who I am. My name is Aiden Ermey. I work as a cloud solution architect for Microsoft, specializing in Azure infrastructure. Among the many other things that I can do and have experience with, I also have experience with infrastructure as code, in particular uh, Terraform. I've been working with that for several years. And so I thought I'd share some of my experience and hands-on with the latest feature set with the cost estimation tool in the cloud product. Um, and here are just some ways to get a hold of me or reach out, whether you want to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Definitely hit up my blog because I have some articles in there on Terraform from my real world experience. Not all positive, but some of the challenges I hit so that you are aware of that if you're just starting so you can kind of get around that or get ahead of that before you hit it to, in a real uh, challenging scenario. Also, I have code examples for some Terraform templates that I've authored on my GitHub. I have several repos there that are available to access, as well as my YouTube channel, which is where I post uh, videos uh, like this. So please feel free to like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you have questions, comments, please put them uh, below. And if you have any topics that you'd like me to cover in a future video presentation, uh, just feel free to drop me a message or a line, and I'll see if I can accommodate that. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.